Coming to you on this fine August morning. We're near the end of the month in Central Texas and I'm about ready to plant a bunch of seeds. What's up everybody? This is Scott from New Garden Road and I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and spread the word for me. While you're at it, subscribe and get notified for more gardening action. So check it out. The first thing that I want to share with you is the vegetable garden planting guide for my area. I'm in Central Texas, Zone 8B. This is from the Texas AgriLife Extension Service at a and It gives you an idea of when to plant from seed. It will note on here for some crops that you need to start from transplants. This all boils down to timing. If it's telling you to plant something from a transplant, that's gonna mean that it's been started from seed probably six to eight weeks prior to that point. So the point in time in which it's recommending to set out those transplants would not be appropriate to start from seed. You'll be way behind and you won't have the harvest time at the right time of year. Right now, what I would really wanna be planting is some of the last chance warm season crops, things like beans, cucumbers. I'm gonna try some potatoes and squash all those crops are tender they're not going to survive a frost and our first average frost in Austin is about the end of November so roughly that gives us 90 days to get some crops to harvest that's really important to note because not all the crops that you plant can be ready in 90 days for instance when I'm choosing some of these bush beans that I like to grow they're about 50 to 60 days to maturity that gives me a lot of cushion and it's likely that I can be successful within that time frame to get some production off of those plants you can see on that planting guide for example okra is one of those that the window has been closing this last week and the reason is it takes longer for those to mature there's less of a likelihood that you can get them to produce before that first frost hits but you want to take that into consideration when you're choosing what to plant. The other thing that I really like to do is make a garden diagram. So I took some time and made a spreadsheet and I basically just freestyled. But that allows me to take some notes. When I planted something, where I planted it, how many, what variety, anything that I can fit on there that I feel like is appropriate, I will note on my garden diagram. And I'll utilize this diagram at the beginning of next season in order to maintain some type of garden crop rotation. It's probably only a language that I would understand. As long as you're making records, you're gonna be helping yourself out. All right, so check it out. I've got a ton of seeds that I've saved up here. A lot of these are new some of them are from last season it's probably a lot more than I'm going to plant however it feels like a good investment you know you can always take these and put them in the freezer save them till next season and share them with a neighbor share them with an organization that maybe collects and redistributes seeds I've gathered all the seeds in this box that I would intend to plant right now and going into September October so let's start off by picking out some seeds that we want to plant today did anybody say beans I love growing some beans they're a great way to really feed yourself Check it out, the Maxibel French filet. Pretty fancy right there. These beans are 55 days to maturity. Remember what I was saying, the days to harvest. That's what's important. And when you look on the seed pack, somewhere on there it should tell you. See right here, it just simply says 55 days. Sometimes it may say days to harvest, days to maturity. It might not say anything at all. However, if you have any indication of that on there whatsoever, that gives you something to go on. All right, what's next? Cucumbers? Let's grow some cucumbers. The Suyu Long have been my favorite for the longest time. They really are productive. They do great in the heat. This package says 60 days to maturity, so that's perfect. How about some squash? I love homegrown squash. Let's see what we've got here. The Tatume, this is a really tough squash. No indication for the days to maturity, days to harvest on the seed package, but I know from experience we're talking about 60 days. Let's talk a little bit about experimentation. I've never grown loofah gourds before, but I've really been enjoying all the videos that people are putting up and how much fun they're having growing them, so I really wanted to give it a shot. And when I picked up this seed package, I noticed something interesting. On the front, it's it says edible fruits 65 days what Lufa gourds have edible fruits. The young gourds are eaten like okra throughout the south. I'm from the south and this is the first that I'm hearing about this. Get out of here. It's definitely something that I have to give a shot. I'm so excited about the potential of having some edible gourds that are like okra that I'm supposed to be eating this whole time and I didn't even know about. After you have all that, the next thing that you're gonna need is a garden. I mean, it goes without saying, but you know, maybe you have a raised bed, maybe you have some rows in the ground that you've built up, maybe you have some containers 
containers, some hanging baskets, a planter on your deck, whatever it is, you're gonna need something to plant in. So let's check out what we've got, survey the available space, and make a plan. All right, so believe it or not, this is bed number two, as indicated on my diagram. Right now I've got a second sowing of some long beans growing on this trellis here, but I've got about a square foot of space in front of them totaling four square feet. And I think that'd be ideal for some bush beans. I've got some corn growing. The other thing that's interesting to note is that these are all tender crops, crops for the fall. So I would anticipate all of them turning at about the same time. And then this bed could be fully available to plant another round of cool season crops at about the right time otherwise I could cover crop it but that's just something to take into consideration if you're interplanting continual planting year-round gardening using this spacing grid I'm gonna center it in the middle of the square foot approximately where my first emitter is on my drip line this is a really simple component drip irrigation system that I love. I've got a little bit of a video on that if you want to check it out, how to water your garden. I've got that planting grid in the right spot and I'm simply going to push my seeds in. What I'm looking at here is this back line that I think I can plant some cucumbers on. I don't have a trellis running the full way, but I can sure fix that. That will give me some space to do a successive planting of some cucumbers, probably a week or two apart. This is bed number four. I've got a nice trellis to support a vining crop. I'm thinking about these loofah gourds. Here we are at bed number eight. Currently, I'm growing some okra. I'm looking for a place to plant some squash. I know I haven't put any over here ever, so it should be good. And the thing that's kind of cool about this, the okra is gonna keep growing. It's going to be taller than the squash, so they shouldn't interfere. So I'm gonna interplant some squash in between this okra. They're both gonna like a higher phosphorus fertilizer, so that's complimentary. Well, we had another hot week here in Central Texas, but nonetheless, I was able to get some of these beans, cucumbers, and squash up. But I tell you what, I came out here the day before yesterday, and it's just like it's my first year gardening. I'm seeing these seedlings are collapsing under the sun and the heat. I don't know what I was thinking, everybody, but I do have plenty of shade cloth. It's something I'm equipped with and that I know that I need to use out here this time of year. So these are the Suyo Long cucumbers. I told you they germinated in about three days. Man, they're growing fast. You see they already got a second set of leaves coming in. When you're interplanting like this and you already have some mature crops growing, it can be difficult to erect some shade cloth, but I have some spare pieces that I utilize just for this purpose. These are the Maxi Bell French Filet green beans. So I use some scrap galvanized fencing to create a little bit of a structure that way the shade cloth wasn't sitting directly on top of the plants right here I've got two varieties of some bush beans growing there's the royalty purple pod and the provider this is a scenario where you can go a little bit more widespread in your shade cloth I'm gonna show you a video from early spring where my partner and I set up a hoop house and that's a really great way to set up some shade cloth in a more long-term fashion you're gonna have plenty of space for the plants to grow and be up right and you can keep it on there as long as you need you could pull it back on some cloudy days get them a little bit more exposure if you've got those tender seedlings out there under full sun it's gonna be too much for them they won't be able to uptake moisture efficiently and in the meantime they're gonna crash they're gonna get burned that kind of stress can really mean all the difference in whether or not they're successful or they fail altogether here's a couple of tomatoes that I planted they were getting a little scorched you just do it however you can clip it try to keep it off of the plants this 40% shade cloth is great for all day coverage. Another thing that I quickly remembered, you've got insects, ground dwellers, recyclers. These are beneficial, they're good in the garden. I do appreciate their presence. However, when you're direct seeding and you're keeping your soil beds evenly moist, that's an open invitation for them to come along and have some food. I am seeing some insect damage there. If they can make it to the next stage, second set of leaves, I'll feel a lot better about it, but they're still vulnerable right now. And since you're trying to grow your own food in a really harsh time of year, you're gonna have to take some measures to curve their 
population or deter them. And just a couple of things that I employed this week were diatomaceous earth. That's a fossilized diatome that's been crushed. It's microscopically razor sharp. They don't like it. When it gets on them, it irritates them. You can see where I sprinkled a little DE. I've got a little poofer that shoots it out all at once. It's kind of messy. It does cause them to desiccate and that can terminate them in the ends. But it's also a good deterrent if it's something that they don't like to get close to. The other product that I like to use sparingly is called Sluggo Plus. The active ingredient in this is spinosad. That's a cultured bacteria that when ingested by insects really causes them to stop feeding. This is a pelletized bait that you can lightly sprinkle on your seed beds and they'll be attracted to it, they'll feed on it, and that will help to curb the population. Over the years I have learned to incorporate a couple of these elements and they have dramatically benefited my success in the garden. Now check out some of these other awesome gardening videos on my channel. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.